If you're making a game engine, you need to make sure that everything that you add to the code base works and it works uh, properly and it is well integrated with everything else and there's no room for errors because if there's a bug in the game engine, it means that every game that uses the engine will inevitably have this bug, which is very bad. You don't want this. You want to have a game engine that is bug proof or as bug proof as possible. And this, what I'm about to show you, is not a receipt to make sure that 100% you will get a bug-proof game engine. This is probably impossible, but it will help you a lot. So let's figure this out together. And what I'm talking here in this video is about unit testing. And I've been talking about that for a long time, but this video was very interesting because I do have, and I'll show you in a moment, um, some great example of why unit testing uh, is good and how can it help you to achieve as a, exactly what I said. Um, if you fo are following here and you notice in the previous video, I'm actually implementing the, uh, the core systems of the game engine. Um, so I do have the game object, the group and the scene. Scene is not very well implemented at the moment. It's just like here, <laughs> but the group and the game object are, and I've explained it about it in the last video so if you missed it and if you want to know about it and how it works and so on just move uh, go back one video and you will follow along but basically i i finished implemented the group and the game object and i was like okay fine i'll just commit this and that's it it works and it's fine and it's perfect so now i'll move on and i'll create the scene i'm not gonna write tests for this it's not necessary and so on blah 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 and i was like i felt like hmm I should test this. I should write unit tests for this. I should make sure that the constructor for the object works. And then this const, movable, set const, bounding box, get groups, this operator, and all that works. And the same thing for the group. I need to make sure that every single corner case that I can think of uh, works here. So not only those um, functions here individually, but how they integrate with, some, with others. For example, um, the group, if you follow, if you missed the last video, again, watch it, but basically a group can store a list of objects and it does a bunch of optimizations with that. But what if you add an object to a group and then delete this object? Will the group crash? You should test this, it's important. Uh, what about the other way around? What if you add an object to the group and then you delete the group? Will the object crash? Well, this is a great question. What if you change an object type from um, const to movable? Will it uh, do everything that is necessary to update in the groups or in the object itself? Or another question that it is uh, even more complicated. So you add an object to a group, but then you create another object and you use the copy constructor here of this object. Will it work? Will this new object be added to the group? Or will it crash? Or I don't know, not copy everything properly? Or what about the operate the assignment operator? You need to test this. So there's a bunch of stuff that you need to test, and it is very hard to test this real time. Like, hey, this is an engine. I would just uh, run the engine or write a, a quick game and figure out if this works because there's there are so many corner cases that in the end you won't be able to find that. And a great example of that is Cave Engine. Um, you've been developing Cave for a long time. I've been developing actually for like nine years and the code base is huge. And now we are you know, in, in production, in full time production basically here in the studio of our, our next game using Cave Engine, which is my 3D engine. And since it does not have unit testing uh, and there's a lot of people working in it, I mean, we have three people working in it, um, in this game, it is very common to find weird bugs that were introduced like years ago um, or many time ago, not exactly years, but it was there and we never found it because there was no unit testing. So it is so important to write that because I was like, okay, it's fine, this works. And then I wrote unit tests. And now if I run the tests, you can see they all work. But you can also see here that I do have a lot of tests for the for the collision and so on. Uh, now I have 115 tests, but if you go ahead and, and check how many lines of code I have to write, let me actually move this up. Check this out. It goes from line um, 1500 all the way down. And this is all related to, to 
the the game object and the group on the way down to 1900 so 400 lines of code just to test this and what happened when i just wrote the, all these tests and i uh, i think about every single corner case well i run and as you can see there was a lot of mistakes a lot a lot of stuff not working for example uh the copy constructor here was not coping stuff correctly assignment operator was wrong too you can see default constructor had a problem was not coping the the name properly um the group build had a problem too because it was not updating the needs rebuild option so even after building the group it was still saying that it, it needs rebuild and this is probably something very hard to debug let's think about it like you're making a game and then you're using this group feature that the game engine have and there's the the group says hey you need to rebuild the build the, the group and then you do that you rebuild it but then it keeps saying that it needs rebuild but that's wrong so this is a bug in the engine but you won't realize that and you think oh this is my fault and you will lose a lot of time doing that so this is very important. Copy constructor too was uh, not coping stuff properly. So you can see a bunch of stuff, a bunch of issues that I was not thinking about it. It was like, ah, no, we don't have a problem here. It's fine. It is working. Let's say game object plus group. This is an integration test, meaning that I'm, inter uh, I'm checking if the game object and the group, uh, if they work together. Well, because I first test individually the game object and then individually the groups, but now I need to test the integration. It's very important to do test integrations when it comes to this uh, because it makes a lot of difference. Um, and then you can see here that I do have errors. For example, change an object from const to movable. And if you see here, um, it was not rebuilding properly, like it was not requiring stuff to rebuild. It was causing crashes this is like even this was crashing to be honest i had to fix a crash you know, like not one crash i have to fix like five crashes because there were so many corner cases that i was not expecting when i was when i wrote the code that i had to fix so it's very good to have this um then we have this other here integration with the object copy constructor the group was not containing the object so uh again wrong behavior for the copy constructor uh so you can see that this helps me because then I was able to immediately see, oh my God, I have a lot of problems in this API. So I was able to fix it and now I don't have problems. I mean, um, I don't have problems, maybe not. Probably I will have some problems too, but they're way harder to just spot now because of course, as you can see here, I've check the bunch of corner cases for it so this is good so this is very important and all the other stuff here in the engine is tested too so there's a bunch of unit tests for everything and uh, a good thing about this is uh later on if i say oh i want to change for example the collision resolution um for the transform versus sphere it may break a, a bunch of stuff but I will immediately be able to spot this because it's here, there's a unit test. So as soon as I break the transform versus sphere, it will fail the unit test and say, oh my God, no, 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 this is wrong. Please fix it. Do not commit this and do not release the engine because it does have problems. Okay. So it, it, it makes it very hard to, to introduce regression uh, in a code base. And a great example of this, um, and I'll talk about uh, cave engine once again, we are making this huge game like Pixel Nightfall. And then one day I refactored the engine. I changed a bunch of stuff in the back end to make it way faster. And, and it was indeed faster. Um, I was basically not calling the, the update method for, for every single entity and component anymore. Cave Engine does not do that anymore. But when I did this change, it worked out great and was fine. But the Cave Engine had this function called uh, Schedule Queue. That may um, basically means that if you want to delete an object, an entity in, in Cave, uh, you can delete you can delete it immediately with Q, or you can schedule it to be deleted in like five seconds for now. Uh, so this was very good, and our designers here were using this a lot to do a bunch of stuff of delayed stuff uh, in the game. But I was not able to, to test this. I was like, oh, okay, it's fine. I, I never think about that. So when I did this change in the backend uh, for the engine, when I removed the update for every single entity. But what I did not realize is that the update of the engines was actually uh, the thing 
responsible to actually kill them if the, the schedule queue was on. So, so the schedule queue stopped working and we were only able to notice that like at first glance, like one or two days before I, I pushed the, the new, new version of the engine to the designers here, um, they started like saying, hey, this is something wrong. There's something wrong happening in the code. I don't know why. And then the, the, the designers took like three, four days trying to debug and figure out what was wrong. And in the end was the an engine bug that got introduced after a feature. This was an engine regression. And this is very bad. This is why I'm learning all that, all the unit test stuff, because I don't want this to happen anymore and ever again. So I'm writing unit tests for Genomy and I will write unit tests for Cave uh, eventually because Cave is already 100,000 lines of code, but I, I need to do this um, to make sure that the regressions never get introduced. Because now, again, if I refactor something, if I change something in the back ends here and I break something like Let's say that I had here um, a schedule queue test for the engine. Let's say that Genemy have this. Um, as soon as it breaks, as soon as it stops working, the test will no longer pass. I say, oh, nope, it's not passing. It's not killing the entity uh, after a second or something like that. So you should check that. Um, as soon as I do this, it will obviously spot and I will obviously, obviously be able to understand and fix the bug. And in unit test also helps me. Uh, I'm noticing that it helps me to write like a better code overall because I can think of corner cases that I would not norm I would not normally do uh, if I was like just making the, the game and and that's it because I can test very easily stuff here. So this is great. And this corner cases, you may think, oh, if you're not thinking about the corner case, they probably does not exist. And this is not wrong. This is this is wrong, actually. This is not correct because uh, I found in cave the hard way around that corner cases happens all the time. So yeah, this is a quick uh, showcase video here. This is showing the importance of unit testing. And by the way, an engine update. Uh, yes, the game object is basically finished. I still need to handle like the the scripting stuff that I was mentioning before and also the how it gets handed to the screen. This is important too. So I need to handle that uh, and I need to implement the scene. There's nothing here. So this is the next steps. So that's it for, for that, that. Oh my God, if I can pronounce, right? If I can say this. That's it for this video, folks. Let me know if you have any questions or comment and I see you in the next one. Bye.